Hey guys, Nate from The Bike Company. Well, after the Mondraker demo a couple weeks ago, I decided to pull the trigger on a new bike for the first time in about four years. So here's an extended first ride Mondraker Foxy Carbon review. So what's an extended first ride? Well, there's a couple ways to look at a review. Is it based on a quick ride and a bit of an extrapolation? Demo reviews are typically like that. On a single day, you're forced to feel what you can feel and kind of lean on your experience to explain the bike. Here we go. Carbon Foxy. Another thing to think about, is the review based on trails the reviewer knows or at least terrain the rider is confident in? Ooh, ready and new brakes. Ooh, so much grip. Dancing around the back. I've tested some bikes over the years in various destinations, and it can be really hard to look at a bike's minutia on trails you're not really locked in on. This video and the accompanying blog is based on four rides. Two, a local lap by the shop at Whiting Ranch, and two, my local lap at Mission Trails in San Diego. The video has thoughts from the on-trail rides, as well as this audio overlay. Let's get into it with some clips from my first ride, I was chasing the sun in Whiting Ranch. Now admittedly, I was in a hurry for this ride, so I just kind of grabbed the stock suspension settings, hopped on the bike, and took off. A few things I noted from the first ride. The Foxy is a really planted bike. Pretty stable under the brakes. Maybe one thing my last bike didn't have. It's comfortable carrying speed into and is very good at holding a line through the apex and corner exit. Turn corners nicely for a quote unquote big bike. The Mondraker has exceptional braking traction. It's notable with the bike vertical as well as trail braking in with some lean angle. That was a fun descent. A fun drop. Take a shortcut because it's kind of late and I want to see how this bike corners and this real tight stuff where in theory this bike should be a little big. Again, real comfortable under the brakes. I'm sure once these brakes bed all the way in, it'll be super fucking nice. After the ride, I glanced at the tires. I didn't see any of the telltale slashes on the sidewall. This meant what I was feeling was the mechanical grip from the zero suspension design. Comfortable through there, make bars a little bit wide. If I fine tuned the tire pressures, I could have even more grip. <laughs> kind of stuttered the front end there. Could pull it back around. I was very happy with the fit. It is a bit longer than my previous bike, but I was looking for that. Since the Mondraker is slightly longer in reach and taller in stack than my previous SB130, I was able to stay in a size large on the Foxy. All in all predictable in the slower stuff. Nice. It felt like this was a bike you're in and not on, which I do prefer when descending front and rear wheel were both easy and confident to control without outrageous body English. Bike will take a nice amount of lean angle while still maintaining a lot of bite. Yeah, front end, a little more pop would be suited to my personal likings. It's close. It's real close. I also run a ton of front end. Real compliant. Like a little more pop out of that, but smooth. It's all get up. Yeah, I, I can get the back end where I, the back end's close. 
seconds plus. I'd like to get some more volume spacers and take out some of the compression. This front end's got a little bit more fine tuning. So probably before I take it out tomorrow morning, I'll figure out what I can max out. Overall, a quick hour lap chasing the sun without taking the time for, you know, the perfect setup, but the bike felt really good. I decided to move my schedule around and take the Foxy out the next morning in Mission Trails. One area I found that needed work, I was looking for more support from the fork. The Olin's RXF is known as a very plush platform. I was running Olin's suggested settings, but I prefer a bit more punch in my suspension. While the RXF with high and low speed compression settings was notably better than the demo fork, I knew I'd have to fine tune my setup. As a note, I don't think this is going to be an issue for most riders, but as a heavier rider, I don't have the same range of adjustment with the ramp up chamber as lighter riders might. Mission Trails in San Diego is another fun trail network with enough terrain to enjoy while being a good place for solo rides, or it's not so gnarly you're going to find yourself uh, thrown in the scenery too hard. I was interested in how the Mondraker would climb. There are a handful of different switchback sections, a little bit of rocky climbs, and some additional single track climbs my first ride didn't have. So I will almost guarantee you that you're a stronger climber than I am. What I'm looking at here though, it's one of my local trails down here in San Diego, and it's got just a quick series of switchbacks. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Mondraker, you know, with its wheelbase, and then the head tube on the Foxy compared to what I'm used to. I'm interested to see if there's more body language to get around these, or uh, body English, I guess. And you know, what the front end wants to do, whether I'm gonna see wheel flop issues or push issues, or if I can just drive it off the back wheel. So, so yeah, to be intuitive, I think it is driving a little bit off the rear wheel compared to trying to hand input steering. And if you drive out that rear wheel, get a bit more lean angle. It's a, uh, it's a competent feel. Probably hear the 52 freeway there behind me. So this is a section, not particularly technical but it's given me fits before, mainly just out of having enough leg to do it. Cause this isn't what I pride myself on necessarily in my riding. But we're gonna try it with the 52 tooth and the uh, 32 tooth oval. So 52, notably easier than the 50. But what I would say, I'm also notably more cautious when I shift into it. Feels like a pretty big jump, but it's nice what's there. Try a little obtuse line, see how the bike climbs. It's the first time I've on a wheel on this bike but it was an abusive line for sure you know I thought I was real confident over that I found tight switchbacks felt similar to my previous bike given the Foxy is slightly slacker I expected using handlebar steering to change direction you'd have to lean opposite to the steering to keep the bike standing up to minimize the front tire grab or you know how it folds over I think I ran out of fuel not bike the other option in tight uphill corners was to get on the power and drive off the rear wheel this allows more lean angle but does require a little bit more effort and uh, acceleration. Churning over the chunk, the Mondraker stands apart to me. It feels like it just wants to crawl up the terrain and maintains a lot of forward momentum, rather than feeling like it pops up or back compared to some other designs. 
While I'm admittedly not a great climber, I can judge a bike's efficiency and feel from bursts of acceleration. The Foxy behaves well when you add power. Any additional effort through the pedals quickly translates to speed to the rear wheel. I didn't feel any sacrifice of efficiency with the additional travel of the 150mm Foxy compared to my, I think it's a 137mm SB130 lunch ride. Well, anyway, still ran out of leg. End of the day, last climb, but it felt good. I definitely noticed all three of the things. Well, now on to more details on the Foxy's trail feel when pointed downhill. Over the first couple rides, I'd made minor adjustments to the suspension. Holes are a bit bigger than the last time I was here. <laughs> I was adding a bit more pop out of the rear and looking for some more support and pop out of the fork. Even with the out of the box settings, the rear was really close to my preferred setup. The bike sat high enough in the corners for a great feel during direction changes. I'd used full travel a couple times, but I never felt the bike bottom out hard. Over my first few rides, I was working on the rear shock to find where the bike would start to chatter and then I wanted to dial it back slightly. I personally like my bike's quick handling and poppy, I'm comfortable giving up a little bit of grip, you know, and heading into a slide for the advantages of feel when pumping the trail for speed or popping out of corners. I had the Olin's TTX close to this feel with the stock volume spacers using PSI and compression. A couple rides later, I added two more of the band volume spacers to max out the spacing and was able to back down slightly off the compression, which has got a nice trail feel. I reset the fork's air pressure before the second ride. I dumped the main chamber entirely and then pushed the uppers down to empty the negative air chamber and then went and maxed out the ramp up chamber. This helped, but I'm still looking for just a touch more mid-stroke support. When I reviewed the bike after the second ride, I noted that the fork wasn't using full travel, although it never really felt harsh either. When I reviewed the bike after the second ride, I noted that the fork wasn't using full travel, although it never felt harsh either. There were a couple times I could see it wanting a bit more travel, so I lowered the high speed compression setting for my next rides. Going forward with my extended test rides, I knew that I had the bike set up pretty close, so I spent a little more energy working on riding position and just learning what the Mondraker wanted me to do differently than my last bike. It's always hard to compare a bike that you've had for, you know, my last bike's the longest one I've ever owned at four years. I was pretty tuned into it. So a new bike is gonna take a bit of time to get familiar with. However, the jump over to the Foxy was pretty intuitive. I don't do any GPS trail tracking, so I can't say, yeah, it's faster in this or that. But looking at some of the ride footage, it looks like I'm entering corners a bit faster than on my previous bike. So far, I haven't found a situation where the Foxy couldn't be forced into a slightly tighter turn radius and trust the bike to hold it. There are a couple times when I don't force it over and I come out a bit wide, but again, I think that's slightly more cornering speed or just getting used to a revised body position on the bike. It will be interesting to get the Mondraker out into bigger terrain. I know that the aluminum demo Foxy felt great down the luge, which is a bit steeper and chunkier than either of my test trails. But I try not to test bikes in terrain that's too much bigger than my comfort zone so when I can actually talk about what the bike's doing while riding, especially if I'm riding by myself. If I'm trying to define how a bike feels, I want to keep it well within my control range and minimize the variables. Okay, so let's start to wrap up this Carbon Foxy review. But by the way, check out the blog that accompanies this video for even more details that I might have left out of the video. So the short list on the Foxy, tons of grip, really a planted bike under the brakes, in corners, and even when the wheels come back down out of the air, it grabs grip on the trail quickly. 
The bike changes direction well. The bike is quick to enter into a direction change and easily pushes all the way deep into that lean angle. That was one of my notes after riding the aluminum Foxy, but on the carbon bike, or I suspect probably just with the more sophisticated suspension, it eliminated that hang that the demo bike had when changing directions. The carbon bike keeps traction well, even at deep lean angles, and given that I still haven't seen any tire slashes from the air pressure being dialed in, that's got to all be attributed to the mechanical design of the Zero suspension. The bike eats up chunk. I'm still working on the fork, you know, a touch of preference, but this bike has some monster truck capacity if you really want to push it into that realm. Even with the softer fork, I found that getting my weight a bit further back allowed the fork to work through the terrain. I do prefer a bit more support to stay forward on the bike and kind of stab in a little harder. And I'm sure over the next few rides, I'll, I'll get that and I'll make some adjustments. The bike is light. Without pedals, my build came in at 30.8 pounds. That's with XO Plus tires front and rear, GX alloy cranks, GX cassette, you know, I don't live and die by bike weight, but I do know it's a bigger deal to a lot of riders and the Mondraker chassis are light. The bike climbs really well. It's lively. You know, for a 150 millimeter bike, I was a little bit tepid on, okay, do I go slightly bigger or slightly smaller than my previous rig? And, you know, I'm glad I went to the little bigger bike because I don't feel like I give anything up there. And it's not dead downhill by any stretch it's a very lively feel and you know it doesn't run through the travel so it's not using travel for no reason and the Mondraker is sophisticated enough that it has a quality of travel that it's not using the quantity to make up for the lack of quality where some bigger travel bikes they have to use all of that travel just to be not rattling your teeth out or something the Mondraker seems really happy whether or not I use 80% travel, you know, 90, even up to 100. I don't really feel that bike bottom hard. And it's a lively bike throughout. I haven't had a ride where I'm like, man, I this is this feels like a downhill bike or something. It, it's been a lively bike for a 150 rear, 160 front. Been really impressed. Okay, total vanity here, but the Foxy looks mean. It just does. When I see it in my office, it just makes me happy. Some notes on parts of my build that are either new to me or that I found interesting. Well, let's see. I'll look at my notes. Uh, start with the 1052 Eagle cassette. It has a notably easier gear ratio than the 52. It's helped my climbing, which needs all the help it can get for sure. But the jump from the 42 to the 52 feels big. Like, I don't think you want to dump shift into that gear as a bailout. It seems like that would be hard on the equipment. I feel like it might actually make me a stronger rider staying in the 42 more often as well. I can see where stronger riders would gravitate to the 52th option still. But I can tell you as a not so fit rider, it's helped me, uh, the 52 tooth has helped me pedaling more. Oval chain ring. This is the first time I've pedaled an oval chainring more than, you know, say one ride. Um, and usually it's on a bike I'm not that familiar with. My two cents, and it's got to be taken with a bit of grain of salt, you know, because I'm not a great climber. But in certain conditions, I thought the oval was really good. And in certain conditions, it was kind of, hmm. When you're going at such a low cadence that you're barely making any kind of head headway where everything hurts, it still hurts. If you get up into that slightly faster RPM where you can more lively turn your legs around, I do feel like I noticed it being slightly easier. It's not a super notable release to the smaller radius, but I feel like you can tell it's there and over a long distance, it does add up positively. Standing up to sprint, uh, I, I felt it felt kind of funny the first couple times. I haven't noticed it after that, but standing to climb, I think it feels a little funny, uh, but not so bad that I wouldn't put it on the bike again. It just kind of maybe rolls over just a little bit different. At a fast cadence, which let's be frank, it's not my problem, but you know, some of you it might be. 
when your legs really get going, it can feel a little jerky. Uh, that's just my thoughts. I'm sure there's people who, who see it the other way, but you know, really like getting your legs going, I, I felt like it, it, not having that clean radius, it felt weird. Uh, pretty much everything else on the bike I've ridden before. I went back to Magura MT5 brakes to save some money so that I could justify the budget in other places. Uh, the MT5s, they feel great. They offer top tier performance at a great price. It's never any disappointment there. Uh, I, I love the, uh, the mounting brackets and the system on the new Fox transfer. Just saying, it's uh, not like you adjust your saddle much once it's dialed, but on a new bike, it's nice to have that improved hardware to move it around. I went back to Ergon Grips, and then I went with the Tag T1 Carbon Bars, which I left at full length. I've always held like the outside portion of my palm off the edge of the grips, and I wanted to see if a longer bar would reset my hands fully onto the grips. And so far, uh, no. But the Ergon G1, GE1 grips have good padding on the impact zone of your palms, and along with Tag's ovalized carbon design, both have helped give the bike a touch more compliance onto my hands. Oh yeah, last. I tried the Fidlock uh, magnetic water bottle on this build. So far it's pretty good. Uh, it takes some getting used to. Since you don't have to pull the bottle forward, but it rotates out sideways, it fits in a lot tighter frame triangles. All right, 30 second Fidlock review. Magnetic, works really well. The only thing I've noticed, it's stiffer this way than this way. So if you're gonna drink out of it, squeeze it this way. It's a much easier thing. It does make slightly more noise than my previous bottle and cage setup, but it's not too bad so far. I haven't ejected a bottle, which uh, my worn cage or maybe my older bottles, uh, either way, that was becoming an issue more frequently on my previous setup. So it's, it's nice that the bottle stays there. Well, I appreciate the, the watch. And uh, if you have any questions on any of these Mondrakers, feel free to hit us up at bikeco.com. And we look forward to working with you on uh, this or your next dream bike. I'm sure we're going to have more content coming uh, on longer term reviews on this Mondraker Foxy. And uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye out for that on bikeco.com and uh, other content highlighting the very best in MTB.